I'm holding a model here of a gyroid. A gyroid is a minimal surface. This one is triply periodic, and it is discovered by a mathematician named Alan Schoen. It has two sides, a white side and a red side, and uh, it's a very interesting surface for mathematicians. It turns out that the same structure uh, is appealing to molecules, that molecules like to self-assemble into a gyroid structure. In fact, they don't do a single gyroid, they do a double gyroid. So I've got two lattices here that are uh, ones in red and ones in white. They're networks, they're graphs, if you like. And you can see a little bit of that surface is there to partition the red side from the white side. And these two networks actually are where the molecules tend to reside, and they form this interpenetrating labyrinthine network, which has got cubic symmetry and is pretty amazing, and the mathematicians were happy with it. And it turns out that uh, chemists and physicists and material scientists were pretty happy with it because certain substances choose this structure uh, to self-assemble into. And so I'm, I'm going to hold up a, a simplified single network, let's say the blue network, which turns out to be left-handed, and the red network, which is every, every bit about it's the same except it's a different color and a different handedness. It's right-handed. And these two networks are not separate like this, but they're actually intertwined like this. So the red and the blue, I can't get them apart anymore. There's space in between them because there's a third substance that divides the red from the blue. Uh, and that third substance in our case is polystyrene. And the red and blue networks are both polydimethylsiloxane. And the polystyrene polydimethylsiloxane is a block polymer, a di-block uh, polymer com consisting of the polystyrene matrix and the two PDMS networks. The machine that's here is called a scanning electron microscope but it has a focused ion beam tool. So it can use a focused ion beam to slice a thin section away from a sample, and then you can take a high resolution image of it using the scanning electron beam. And so we uh, use a technique called slice and view. We slice and view and slice and view, and then we stack those slices up and we can make a three-dimensional reconstruction. And we've been interested in measuring uh, the surface of this gyroid material using a technique like this. And the scientific question that we were pursuing was, is the gyroid, the surface of the gyroid, a minimal surface? Is it a constant mean curvature surface related to it in some way? Um, so you needed to get high resolution images in order to see the detail of the surface structure. And we were able to do that. And to our surprise, um, everyone uh, in the mathematical community, the, the symmetries are such that the, the uh, a structure is cubic, which is a very high symmetry. Um, we found our samples, uh, as nice as they were, uh, were not cubic, they were triclinic, which is uh, much low, lower symmetry than, than what we expected. It turns out that um, probably everyone that's been experimentally studying the, the gyroid has been studying something which is non-cubic. Uh, it turns out the structure is distorted. The real structure is and not in the pure mathematics, uh, but in the real materials, uh, distortions occur. And we were able to measure those distortions quite accurately uh, using this slice and view technique and to be able to understand better how real molecules self-assemble and form this double gyroid structure, which turns out to be related to, close to, but not cubic. And that not cubic part is important uh, for properties. Uh, the physical properties that such a structure will display, for example, its interaction with waves, uh, is, will be critically dependent on the detailed precision of how these uh, structures assemble and if they really do have cubic symmetry or whether they have some distorted symmetry which is less than cubic. We have these sort of ideal structures that the mathematical community can prove exist and so on. Then you have the question of when molecules come together and, and form these things, uh, they're not mathematicians, <laughs> they're molecules. They're following some processing steps and they're trying to organize themselves to minimize their free energy and they may or may not fit perfectly into these idealized structures. And that uh, distinction between perfection and reality can be very important for things like battery applications and photonics and phononics where the detailed symmetries over long ranges really affect the uh, properties that are expressed by the actual material.